The result is actually quite a bit closer than many people anticipated. All the polls here in the lead up to the vote seem to indicate there'd be a pretty clear victory for the no vote. At least 60-40. Some loyalist politicians here were even suggesting it might be in the order of 70-30. But what it looks like it'll be is closer to 56-44. to Now, that matters here because the scale of the defeat or the victory really does determine what the shape of the conversation about the future of New Caledonia looks like. Uh, certainly, people who are in uh, pro uh, pro uh, uh, independence camps mm. are very happy with the result, even though they lost. I actually went to a uh, a coalition of uh, of uh, parties, their celebrations last night. I arrived, and I thought I'd arrived at a victory celebration. <laughs> there were flags waving everywhere. There were cars in the street honking. Um, I think they now feel Virginia that they're within striking distance. So, even though the vote was no and a, and a clear vote for no. Uh, independence campaigners feel that they've got uh, room to manoeuvre and they're confident that they will get there inevitably. So the French president must be feeling rather chuffed about this? Yes, uh, France is meant, strictly speaking, to be neutral, of course. It's uh, the arbiter and it's running this entire process, but nonetheless it's meant to, it says to be leaving the uh, decision in the hands of the people of New Caledonia. But Emmanuel Macron was clearly pleased to see uh, New Caledonia vote, at least for now, to stay with France. Uh, he said it was an endorsement of France and a vote of confidence in the future of France, which was interesting language for him to use. So you're saying there, Stephen, that the, uh, the, the no vote Oh, sorry, the yes vote were feeling happy even though they lost. So is it possible there'll be another referendum, what, within three, four, five years? Yeah, absolutely, Virginia. Under the, the Numea Accords, which is uh, the, the peace agreement that France struck with independence groups here, there are actually meant to be two more referendums, one in 2020 and then another one again in 2022. That was part of the deal, that independence forces will get three shots, if you like, at independence. Now, when it looked like things were on track for a fairly overwhelming victory for the no vote, a lot of loyalist politicians here were saying, well, there's no need for the second and third votes. They're unnecessary. The vote won't change. I think that last night's result being relatively close probably puts the end to that sort of talk. I think most loyalist politicians would recognise it's very difficult to argue there shouldn't be another vote after such a close result. And that might be why so many pro-independence politicians were so mm. buoyant last night, even though they were on the wrong side of the ledger.